Welcome to Kotlin. Today we're going to explain the benefits of the newly released Jetpack Navigation 3. We'll go through a code example of how to migrate from Navigation 2, as well as exploring some of the newly available features of Navigation 3. The main benefit is that you now completely own the backstack. This is huge news. Instead of just reacting to navigation events, you have full control over what the navigation state is at any point. For example, you can completely replace the backstack with a new list of routes, or you could swap the order of two entries in your backstack. Having this control makes it very easy to prevent annoying things like accidental double taps navigating to the same screen twice. Or to put it simply, Navigation 2 made you describe the navigational steps to get to a backstack. Navigation 3 lets you just set the backstack with the exact content that you want. And since we now have control, it means we can finally store our backstack in something like an activity scope view model and treat it as a single source of truth. This means that your navigation logic just becomes a regular state like anything else and is decoupled fully from your UI. Another benefit is that you're not limited to showing one screen at a time anymore. Navigation 2's nav host could only display one screen from the backstack. With Navigation 3, the new concept of scenes lets you render any part of the backstack wherever and however you'd like. So that could be side by side, or get complete control over custom transitions. I'm not going to go deep into this in this video, but this is quite a big deal for when you have more complex UI patterns, especially with supporting larger screen devices. So now I'm going to show you how to migrate from Navigation 2 to Navigation 3. Just a bit of background on this project that I'm showing you. We just have a notes list screen, a screen for editing a note, a note detail, and a note creation screen. Everything to do with the functionality of the notes is encapsulated in this module and we don't need to worry about it. So hopefully this should look familiar as it's navigation two, but these are our current routes. And if we scroll down, all we have is a nav host where we declare them here using Composable. And each screen has a callback for when we need to navigate to another screen. So first we'll add the dependencies. I'm not going to describe what they do. You can pause the video here and I've added a comment for, for each of them. I've kept the versions outside of the TOML file just for clarity. Note that at the time of this video, Lifecycle View Model Navigation 3 is only available as a snapshot build. So within settings.gradle, you'll need to add the following line. So if we just come back to Navigation 2 for a minute, I'll just quickly show you the flow. So we start at the Notes List screen. We can click into the detail from here. We can click to edit. We can save or go back. And we can also press plus up here to create a new note which will save and go to the detail and then it's back in the list so coming back to our navigation 3 implementation the first thing we need to do we can use the exact same root objects so we're going to copy those across the only difference is these are going to implement the nav key interface now this is just an empty interface, you can read here what it's for, but it's basically just so that your backstack entries can be restored across process death. So we'll add this to each of these. And then we can actually declare our, our starting backstack. So to do that, we'll say val backstack, and they provide a remember nav backstack function. And in here, we can just pass through whatever entries of the backstack that would like. So in our case, this is just going to be the note list. It's worth saying that you don't actually need to implement this interface. This is just if you want to use this remember nav backstack function. If you're going to store this backstack in something like an activity scope view model, make sure that it's still serializable though, so that they're able to be stored and restored successfully. So coming back to navigation two, we can see we've previously used nav host. In place of that, we now have nav display. And within here, we can pass in our backstack. 
and in the code block we get access to our root. So the reason why this is complaining is this needs to return a nav entry. So if we have a look at nav entry, we can see this takes in a key, which was the nav key. So we can just pass in our root. And then this has a content composable code block. So the reason why this root is a nav key is because of the type of this backstack. So this remember nav backstack returns a list, a snapshot state list of nav key. So you can actually use whatever, whatever type you want here. So for example, the backstack could be remember mutable state list of any. We'll give that a note list. And if we passed in this other backstack, this root is now any. So now this bit's going to look a bit similar. What we'll do is use a when statement with root as the subject, and we can just check whether it's whether it's a note list, note create, note detail, or note edit. So to do that, we'll say is note list. And now we can use note list screen. And these are our callbacks available. And now here is where we'll get to see how much control we really have over the back stack. So rather than using a nav controller to try to navigate somewhere, since this nav display is just observing our nav our back stack, all we need to do is simply say back stack add and add an instance of our note detail. So this on note click provides an ID. You can pass it in like that. So it's as simple as that. Our backstack is just a list of backstack entries and we can just transform this list however we'd like. So a similar thing for our on create click. Here we'll just add note create to the backstack. Just going to delete this nav entry from the bottom. Now this when statement isn't going to be exhaustive from our root types. We could turn these into uh, a sealed class and have each of these as children of the sealed class. I'm not going to do that in this video. Instead, I'm just going to use else. We'll just pass in nav entry root. And here we'll, we'll just use text and say unknown root. So now we're going to add the rest of the roots and say is note detail be exactly the same as the others. So now here we need to pass in a note ID. So we have access to that through root.id because we know that root is an instance of note detail which has ID. Now, when we want to go back, so this is the equivalent of calling pop backstack, all we want to do is get our backstack list and call remove last or null. So all this is doing is just removing the last entry in the list. Now for on edit click, we'll say backstack.add note edit and this needs the root ID. Now we'll add the note edit screen. Get the root, uh, the note ID from the root again. On back click will be the same thing. Backstack dot remove last or null on save will be the same. And the last screen to add is note create.
So on back click again, the same. Now we're going to go back to navigation two for this on note created and see what we're doing there. So as you can see, we're telling the nav controller to pop the back stack all the way back to note list, which is the start destination, and then to navigate to note detail. Now, at least for me, this is where navigation three really shines through because this isn't the most clear thing to read for what's happening. Uh, it will implement the navigation three and hopefully it'll be clear what I mean. So all we're going to do is say backstack.clear. So removing everything from the backstack. And now we can essentially just replace everything with a completely new backstack of what we want. So this will be just a list of note list with note, note detail over the top of it. And this on note created provides the ID. So I'm just going to run this to the emulator, but as you'll see, it just has the exact same functionality and works exactly the same. So it's created the new note. And if I go back from here, it should just go straight back to the note list. So that was just a quick look at the basics of moving from navigation two to navigation three. There's actually a lot more you can do with Navigation 3 and I'd really recommend reading into scenes and scene strategies to see the full benefits. I've put some links in the description so make sure to check those out to see all of the current features. If there's anything specific you'd like covered on this channel just let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to make a video on it. Thanks for watching.